For those who don't know, Gary Leonard is the foremost, most important living visual historian of Los Angeles. When I first came on, onto the scene, the LA sort of underground music scene in 81, 82, Gary Leonard was already a legend, already. He was a guy getting everything, you know? Whenever Gary's around, something cool is happening, something really great is going down. And you could guarantee, you could be guaranteed that there's going to be some really cool people attached to the cool scene. He'd be like shooting Mayor Bradley and doing politics. Then he'd be at Dodger Stadium shooting Fernando Valenzuela. Then he'd be at an after hours club at four o'clock in the morning shooting a bunch of punk rock ne'er-do-wells falling asleep in their own vomit. I mean, one of the first words he ever taught me was like anti-establishmentarianism. So like, that's like, I think it was one of my first words, you know, he's like, say, I remember it was like, he's like, say anti-establishmentarianism. Uh, like anti, uh, I couldn't even pronounce it. But when he showed me that he put a picture of me in the um, Los Angeles Public R Library's permanent collection, and it wasn't the, it was a picture of me on Sunset Boulevard, just the most random shot in the world. But he thought it was worthy of being included in the permanent collection of the Los Angeles Public Library. That's Gary Leonard. He's been a constant in my life throughout the entirety of my adult life. This really scared me at first when I moved in, um, but since I've been kind of um, spending time here getting some shelves, um, I bought 10 more shelves last week. I probably need another, a lot, a lot more. Um, so I'm beginning to deal with um, what it takes to organize, to put together um, 60 years of, um, Hoarding. Um, uh, here, here's where I was earlier today. Okay, you can come on here. So there's 60 years of collecting the stuff that, in the course of documenting and chronicling Los Angeles, I wasn't just collecting negatives. Um, it's almost like, in a way, a natural history museum. There'll be a heading that's a band or a nightclub or a groundbreaking, but then there's all the people who are inside. So it needs to build a database to cross-reference. Organizing the ephemera and putting it um, together with the photographs. When you find it, when the future finds it, it's not just the photograph, but it's something else that kind of traveled through, through time to be there. Oh, wait, I have an object. I have an object. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it. There, that was from 1989. Um, yeah. I drew a penis. <laughs> you saw it, right? I drew a penis on Gary's wall. Um, I must have thought that was funny. Well, I see that you're chuckling now, so evidently it was funny. Yes, yes. And so I began um, to build a fence um, by myself with found objects. And as I got more and more um, into it, um, the neighborhood began responding to it. He had gone through a divorce, and I think it was very painful for him and difficult for him. He had gone through a, you know, a period of emotional upheaval. With all you know, his angst and his, his vulnerability and his emotional rawness, he decided to turn the entire yard, which was a pretty big yard, into a sculpture. And he built a series of bridges and tunnels and monuments and stuff out of like bric-a-brac and garbage and bits of glass. And, and you could walk through it in this yard. And it was mind-blowingly beautiful. It's the, to this day the most beautiful piece of art I've ever seen. It was so you could feel the power in it and the beauty of it. And the lesson to me was turning pain into beauty. 
and it was like, um, what to do with this pain? Like, what do you do? Do you crawl up into a little ball? No, you use it as energy and you open your heart and you become greater and you learn and you grow. That's tough, Jimmy. And so many of these people are gone. Um, yeah, I'm getting goosebumps. You know, to be here talking to you, you know, showing you this. Um, when, was, when was this photo taken? Well, that was 1981. Top Jimmy and the Rhythm Pigs. Um, Do you remember uh, the show? Well, this was uh, f photo night, photo ID night at the Zero Zero Club. I get incredible, I, I don't know if you call it joy, transcendence, when I know I've taken that shot and I can feel that time travel when I'm doing it. I can feel that 50 years later, God, I'm glad I took that. God, um, and sometimes it's, um, it's when music's being played and sometimes it's when the sun's coming up and I'm on a construction site and it's the colors in the sky and they're doing concrete. That's what, that's what the work's about. That's what the collecting is about. Um, and that's where it comes from. And so it's my form of, I can't travel in time, but this makes me feel I am traveling in time. It gives me that. I'm a time traveler. <laughs> 